our first. It is our first webinar in October. So we have a new month. Are we ready? We're ready for the fall season, ready to, you know, it's a season of, you know, when the leaves are falling off of the trees, you know, that's a reminder for us to learn to let go. Um, I was also taught this is an awesome time to go through your household and let go of things that you don't need anymore. Donate them. Maybe there's, I just had a friend tell me that she had um, newcomers who moved in right next door to her and they didn't have anything, but she had a whole bunch of things in her garage that she was able to gift them with. So just be mindful, you know, it's a season where, you know, we, we take that internal journey, but we also, you know, want to cleanse our spaces. We want to let go. And then if we can bless other people in that process, I think that's a beautiful thing. So welcome, welcome. It is fall. Uh, webinar Wednesday. We're honored that you've joined us this afternoon. My name is Michelle. I'm joining from Amiskwichu, Eskigen, Edmonton, Treaty 6 territory. Um, so let us know, put in the chat box where you're joining from today. I think it's always important to acknowledge the land in which we're, we're living on. We get to build businesses. We get to be part of community. We get to raise families. Uh, Because I come from Treaty 4 territory, so I acknowledge that even for myself, I'm a guest to these lands, and so I acknowledge those who walked before me, I stand on their shoulders. Um, Today also is October 4th, and so this is a, a moment and a day where we acknowledge the stolen sisters, we acknowledge the missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, two spirited. Um, and we offer prayers and offer, you know, support to their families and to the ones who, who are grieving such a big loss. And it also may be a reminder that we continue, you know, as people to look out for each other, to support each other in all ways. You know, I think as we're part of creator's world, we're in this, you know, part of this web of life and we're all just this mare strand, but we have our responsibility to make this world, to make our communities stronger safer and that starts by really looking out for each other so may we go in that good spirit today and we just you know send our thoughts and our prayers to those families and friends and communities who are grieving and also there's some good news i don't know if you're watching last night but there's a new elected um, premier, Indigenous man, Wab Kanu, uh, who is uh, you know, elected in Manitoba. So regardless of your politics, I think that this is a, a, a good thing. Indigenous people, we have a gift to bring. Um, we have a voice to lend. We have our wisdom and knowledge. And so that, you know, there's an Indigenous man who's going to, you know, lead that province, I think is a beautiful thing thing. Uh, so good things are happening in our communities. So this moment is an opportunity for us to gather, to build our capacity to learn. And so we got Colleen Nolan with us. And she, this is, she's here for round two. I don't know if you were here a couple of weeks ago, um, but she, she brought some good knowledge and she filled us with, you know, a full hour. So I'm going to stop talking because she, I know she's got lots of knowledge, but I just want to just give a brief introduction. And she's an Anishinaabe woman. She's joined Joining us today from Ottawa. She's originally from Garden River First Nation, Ontario. Over 20 years experience in community business, uh, community and business development. She worked in the areas of employment, training, economic development, Indigenous tourism, uh, and she has supported and guided job seeker, seekers and entrepreneurs. So her specialty includes community engagement, program development, and facilitation. So I feel like this afternoon we are in good hands because she's facilitated numerous workshops, programs, training sessions, targeting Indigenous peoples, including the business model Canva, which is why you are here today. Uh, so we're just so very honored that you got to you know, take a moment out of your day. What time is it in Ottawa? I think you're like two, three hours ahead of us. So it's supper time. So mm-hmm. you've interrupted your day just to be with us. So how honored are we? We thank you so much, Colleen, for being here. And so you're going to 
let us know the business model canvas setting the stage part two so we welcome you uh, i'm ready i got my notebook my pen i'm ready to take in all of the goodness that you are going to share this afternoon so i'm going to pass this virtual mic off to you me watch me watch me watch thank you thank you all for for joining me i'm going to share my screen which has my presentation and another thing, if you look in your chat, there is a PDF file of the business model and this that you can that you can download and it's also a fillable PDF. So if you're, if you're savvy, uh, you can, uh, you know, switch a window to half the page and you're able to enter in your information as you go. And if it's like, you know, driving you like you lost your zoom window then don't worry about it just uh use a old-fashioned pen and paper right so thank you very very much for the intro for the introduction uh just a few pieces that i will add on to that and as as also along with that we'll do a review a quick review of part one I'll go through the the business model portions that we went through last week so that we can flow into the part two and just, you know, continue on with some of the um, uh, not in the chat yet. Um, choo -choo -choo. I, I sent put it in the chat earlier, but let me see if this goes in there as well. OK. There we go. Check that out, uh, Ken. See if you can, you can see that. All right. So then we'll get into the business model canvas part two, and that um, towards the end, you know, I really like to, you know, throw in some discussion and just really let's, uh, you know, go through an example of a, you know, something that might um, that might occur or potential in your community. So just a little bit about more about me. My name is Colleen Nolan. Um, I own a business, CN Training Solution, which provides a lot of different uh, types of training. I'm a trainer, business plan writer, economic development, tourism professional. And again, uh, uh, my son I, laughed at me, but I am a mockpreneur, right? Not a mompreneur, a mockpreneur. And I'm COVID on that. Uh, covid I realized that I had a hidden skill and that hidden skill was making moxins. Um, my passion is teaching. So rather than making mocks and selling them, I make them and teach people to make them. So I've done all sorts of um, types of different moxins. Actually, uh, I am on TikTok as well. And uh, I'm kind of... Uh, you know, blown away with one of my TikToks uh, getting almost 15,000 views. So it was one of the classes that I held, the old style mocks and wrap, um, the old style mocks and the mocks and wraps, right? So I did a class a couple of weeks ago and that kind of, um, you know, seemed to get some, some traction there. So my passion is helping people. My passion is moving people forward. My passion is supporting Indigenous entrepreneurs and job seekers. I st began, I, <clears throat> actually, I started a current role this week with Ottawa Tourism. So in that, as the Indigenous, li Indigenous Tourism Liaison, right, got to remember my, my job title, which I will be supporting Indigenous Tourism operators within the Ottawa area. So I'm really excited about that. And, you know, just really to be able to promote our Indigenous Tourism operators region um all right so just uh again just a little bit of backtracking from from last week's so that we can jump into that so what is a business model again a business model describes how an organization cat creates delivers and captures value uh, you know, how that we are making money are we a consulting business where i'm going to you know, make make an income through some of the services that I might provide. Am I a retail business selling product to customers? So what is my business model and how is it that I make 
a little bit of money so that I can, you know, survive and support my family. So the business model canvas is a tool to help you visualize all the building blocks. It's made up of nine building blocks. And last week we went through five of them and it really helps you understand your business model in a straightforward structure way. And one of the things about the business model is it's visual. So you can see it, you can print it out large and stick it up on your wall. You can buy a whiteboard and draw the business model canvas. So it's always constantly changing. As you begin moving forward, you might be changing who you're targeting, or you might be adding in new products, or you might be completely changing those products. So that is one of the cool things about this. It's always, it's always changing. So you're always constantly updating that. Um, I think for the most part, a lot of us are visual learners. So you have it right up on the wall or into paper like you might have and um, and it's easy to use and it helps you gain a better understanding of your business model. A lot of times, you know, I see entrepreneurs that really want to jump in and say, I need a business plan, you know, and, you know, business plans are great if you're looking for grants. Business plans are great if you're looking for, you know, some assistance from the bank, or maybe there's a certain program that you need the business plan for. It's always great for that. But when we're out promoting our business, maybe to, you know, different suppliers or to different businesses, or we're networking, you know, this model canvas gives us that whole understanding of, of our business and helps us communicate that to me a little bit better, right? Sometimes when we're doing business plans, a lot of people will outsource that. And I probably know a lot of people that don't look at that business plan and don't read it from front page to the last page. So when we're doing this, it's really key to understanding your business. And of course, it's fast and easy to use. So last week, when we talked about the first components of the business model, we talked about, I think I'm missing a little piece in this slide. I picked the wrong one. So we've got our first off, our value proposition. What is it that we are, what is the value of our product that we are offering to the customer? Is it cheaper? Is it handmade? Is it authentic? Is it interactive? Is it customized? who are our customers so when we look at you know our you know everybody you know that we might be potential and how are we breaking that down how are we filtering out that customer to be the customer that we want so is it indigenous specific is it non-indigenous maybe i'm offering you know um some training targeted to non-indigenous businesses right our cultural awareness training a lot of that training is set out to the non-indigenous corporations right so who is it our, who are our customers so we break that down and find a specific pool of people is it men is it women is it you know a certain is it the youth is it you know our elders who are our customers that we are targeting for our product? Um, channels, how are we getting our product to that customer? Are we doing it through our local newspapers, our radio stations? Are we doing it through social media? Are we, um, do we have a website that we're putting our information on? Um, are we doing it word of mouth? So when I started doing my, my mocks and workshops, everything was word of mouth. It started off word of mouth. I was posting on social media, but I wasn't really posting like hire me. I was posting, Hey, look what I did. I did a workshop. And then soon people were coming. Oh, I didn't know you did workshops. So, you know, social media is always a great tool depending on how you're using that tool. So, you know, um, so people started reaching out to me and, you know, having full-time roles I was only looking for a certain amount. So I wasn't, you know, looking full on, you know, five days, three days, four days a week doing that sort of training. I was looking for probably two or three workshops a month, right? So how are we getting that information from our, our, our value proposition to that customer segment? Customer relationships. How are we 
How are we maintaining the relationships with our customers? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it automatic? Do we have a maybe a CRM, a customer customer relationship management system that we are outreaching? Do we have an email list that we're you know sending people constant communications? Um, cheekbone beauty. I signed up. I don't know if it was when I bought something or when I, if I signed up to re receive information, but they send their messages at, I believe it's like six o'clock in the morning. Right. So when I, you know, as when I get up, my phone dings and there's that email from them. So whatever it is, like a new product or a sale or something, it's bright early in the morning. And I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. Right. Uh, the last part I'm missing and it's, at the bottom here is revenue. And how is it that we are making money? Is it through my consulting services? Is it through the sales of the products that I have? Maybe I'm a sports store and I'm selling hockey equipment, or I'm a gift shop and I'm selling gift items or a women's clothing store. So maybe I have a campground, you know, or a guided tour um, business. So how is it that we are making money? Is it a one-time transaction? Is it a recurring transaction? Like I, I bet you all of us here have that good old Netflix or Crave or, you know, they've got to be making a lot of bucks with every buying that everybody buying that subscription. So do you have a service that could use that subscription type of revenue generating income for your business? Is it, you know, maybe, maybe you deliver training and every week I'm, or every month I'm going to deliver a new training model and, you know, a training program. And so, you know, I've got these recurring and if you are, uh, you know, if you're on this subscription, you'll be able to access, access that every month. So what kind of subscription services could you possibly provide? So that was a quick, uh, a quick five, uh, five minutes uh, of the first portion of our business model. And, you know, if you need more information, I can always share this, um, the PowerPoint, um, I can send it over to, to, um, to Michelle, and she can get that distributed to you all so that you can have, have the slide deck itself. But be sure to save the business model this PDF form, you can always print it out. Um, you could print it out big. Uh, I don't know how, how good quality the one I gave you, but at least it's fillable. And so let's get rolling on the next portion here. So when we look at this key resources, so key resources uh, describes the most important assets to make the business model work. So the assets could be financial. Of course, we need some dollars, right? So we need some, some money to be able to, uh, maybe I need to rent an office or maybe I need to rent a workspace or maybe I need to buy kitchen equipment, right? Uh, it could be physical. I need that money to be able to buy some of those physical components. Right now, one of the, thing, one of the projects that I'm working on is uh, I'm working with a, a catering company and what they're doing is right now she's renting a kitchen out of a restaurant, right? And she does own a building, but she needs to um, do some renovations to that building so that she can do everything from the building that she owns. So she wants to be able to, you know, apply for a grant to be able to get some money so that she can do the renovations. So the key resources could be, I need $150,000 so that I can purchase maybe a food truck, right? Maybe I, I want to have a food truck business. They could be intellectual. So maybe I need, um, you know, I don't, well, I shouldn't say I don't, I don't like cooking. I don't cook. I cook. I do cook. I really don't like cooking. Uh, I do it and it doesn't, it's, you know, it's good. It's not like I don't, uh, I cook awful. No, but anyways, uh, intellectual. So if I wanted to own a food truck, right. And that's kind of like one little thing that's on, not on my mind, but you know, something that I've been thinking of, but I might want to hire somebody who can uh, create a menu for me. Somebody that can create 
you know, some of these food items and that, that they have that knowledge and experience to do that. Maybe I want to hire somebody to develop programming for me so that I can teach that program, that, um, that workshop, or I could do it myself or human resources. So that could be, well, I need a cook. I need a cleaner. I need, you know, an admin assistant. So I might need a bunch, maybe two or three people to be able to do that for me or to be able to help me out. Uh, with my mocks and with my mocks and classes, I have about, I think for October, I have three classes scheduled and I just started a full-time job. So here I told ask my daughter, can you, can I hire you for 10 hours a week to be able to cut some of the materials for me? Because everything is is I don't have machines to cut it because I want to say hand cut and handmade. So that's something that's important to me when I'm doing the workshops, right? Instead of putting them through a machine that takes 10 minutes, I'd rather right now in the frame that in where I'm at, I want it to be, you know, hand cut and handmade. So our key resources could be financial, physical, intellectual, or human. So what key resources do our value propositions uh, require? And what about our distribution channels? What about our customer relationships and our revenue streams? So if we look at our value propositions, right? Well, you know, hand cut, handmade. Um, maybe I need some of the intellectual to, um, uh, to create maybe mocks and designs. Maybe I need to, somebody to design me something else, right? Um, our distribution channels, how am I going to get that? So one of the things that I was doing was um, I was doing also uh, Zoom training sessions. So I needed to get my product, my customer via um, the mail system, right? So I would cut everything, put it in the post office, and then it would get over to them so that they would be able to log in and do the workshop. Um, what key resources would I need for my customer relationships? Is it going to be manual? And if it's manual, maybe I don't need, you know, too much money to do that. But if I wanted to look at a CRM uh, system, software program, that might cost me money. And it also might uh, require some human resources where you know, I might hire a, maybe a marketing specialist part-time, maybe full-time to be able to continually make those connections. What about revenue streams? Are you using a POS system? So that could be financial, right? I need, I need to keep track of my sales and I need something to, you know, to collect sales. Um, this day and age, I think, you know, more and more people are not having cash in their, in their wallet, Right and need that uh, that sort of tap or e-transfer or methods, right? We talked about that with that revenue, how are people paying? So here is what do I need in order for people to pay? So it could be, um, it could be a POS system. And not only that for our revenue streams, um, I think one of the biggest things with that is being able to um, keep track of your your sales and expenses when you are at or when you are going to be maybe applying for a grant or a loan most most funders most funding agencies will say well you know can we get some financial statements for the past year and again that's one of the prop projects that I'm working on right now is she's getting me all of those numbers so I can create those calculations for her so in my little project I'm her I'm her human resources, right, in her business model, because she's hiring me to do a grant, and she's hiring me to, uh, to work on that uh, proposal for her. So key resources, what do we need to help make our business model work? And so here is just some examples um, that we can look at this is the business model that you should um, that is able to download from your from the chat. So and it could be grants or loans. Physical can be equipment or supplies needed. I need a ton of leather for the classes that I'm doing. So I do have my uh, 
my my guy that I go to, my leather guy, uh, intellectual. You might be looking at designs or curriculums, right? If you're a t-shirt, um, a t-shirt creator, right? Orange orange shirt day was the other day, and a lot of people are, you know, creating their own designs. So, do you have a designer, um, a designer that is creating that for? and human so do you have employees that you might need are you do you have a um a finance uh, professional that you hire so human is everybody that you are hiring to work for you key activities i like this one <laughs> this pretty much is your to-do list right so it describes the most important things a company must do to make its business model work is it production? Is it marketing? Is it problem solving? Or is it development? So one of the things with my business is the keyword, I guess my keyword is customized. So I develop and deliver customized training that might be a little extra work for me. But here I have to go and look at the development of my workshop. So if somebody says, um, can you come in and deliver a three hour workshop on team building? Then I go and look at my curriculum and I go and downsize it maybe and determine, <clears throat> determine what content I'm going to put into that. If I have a food truck, right? My key activities might be buy a food truck. So this is your to-do list. If you are a brand new business, that to-do list could be a lot. But it could be register your domain name. It could be maybe buy QuickBooks, purchase QuickBooks, maybe subscribe to Canva. You know, if you want to create some marketing materials, create a website. If you have that technolo techno technology experience, maybe creating websites on your activities, um, review or research payment systems. So right now I use Square. Right. So there are other payment methods as well. What could maybe research POS systems and then maybe once you get that research. So this is where we talk about as well that it's always changing. So, you know, you did the first three things on your to do list. You can erase those and you can add three new ones on. So if you research, maybe my key activity is research, researching um, payment systems. Right. And you did that. Maybe you cross that off. Now your next one might be buy that payment system, right? You know, or get some resources to buy the equipment that you might need. Maybe the activity is look out, look for funding. So if this is everything, you know, that you need to do to initiate, to start that your business model, if you currently have a business and you're running it, maybe you're looking at expanding or maybe you're like, oh, man, you know, this is awesome. I, you know, I've got all this stuff I need to do. I don't have a website. I don't have this. I'm just collecting cash. So it really, you know, the business model gives you that whole scope of your business as a whole. And sometimes people, the people that I've been working with tend to focus on, you know, a certain portion. I'm a cook. I'm just cooking meals and, you know, forget about the promotion or, you know, I get, I get, you know, my regulars coming in, right? So they really don't, might may not look at the whole model as a scope and just kind of focus on, on what they're doing in the moment. So what key activities do our value proposition require? What about our distribution channels and our customer relationships and our re revenue streams? So again, revenue streams, like I, like I said, purchase or research our customer relationships, you know, maybe I need to uh, create that draft email, right, that I'm going to send out to every new customer, maybe distribution channel, maybe I need to research cheaper options, maybe I need to, I know that Canada Post has a business, um, a business plan, which I didn't even register for yet, register, maybe I have to put that on my key activities, register as Canada Post, because I think you say 5%, on every time yeah as a business you say five five percent every time you're mailing out stuff and it might not seem a lot but you know after a year if you spend you know a couple thousand dollars in shipping you know that five percent could be could be you know the purchase of a computer or 10 leathers for me you know? <laughs> right 
So your key activities really is your to-do list. So here I've got a couple of examples, you know, right away, purchase a square, maybe hire an assistant, maybe even before hiring assistant, I need to develop a job description, right? So maybe that could be on there. Develop pricing model, right? How am I going to price my products? And I know that is always a, a challenge when it comes to time, especially for our artisans, right? How much do I charge my my moccasins? How much do I charge my beadwork? So really, you know, that develop that pricing model can um, can really take, it might take some time. Um, so key activities. So again, your to-do list, what do I need to do? Key partners. We all like these guys. So describes the network of suppliers and partners that make your business model work. Um, when we look at our partners, there's different types of partnerships. So strategic alliances between non-competitors. So as a, I guess as a mox and maker, I would partner up with a beater. So maybe we're doing a workshop where the beater, the beating instructor will teach people how to beat a vamp. And then once they get the vamp done, then we can, you know, we can use the vamp to make the moxin. So it's working with somebody who's not in competition with you. Cooperation. I don't even know if I'm saying this word right, but strategic partnerships between competitors. So one of my friends is, is also a trainer. And what we did was we developed a program we both worked at it together. So we created the curriculum together. We delivered the program together. And um, she does a similar trainings to that that I do. But we were working together to deliver this, um, to deliver this. So if you think about even, you know, vendors, uh, there's a lot of spaces. Uh, there's always a lot of call outs for vendors. Maybe you don't have enough product to put on your table. So maybe you can partner up with somebody else and put that out there. Maybe, you know, again, you have a lot of product, but it might not um, be enough to help sustain like a, a small space that you can set a small store. So maybe you're going to partner up with her to have one uh, one store where you're both selling the same product. So you, in essence, you are competitors, but you're joining forces together be a business, a business work and then joint ventures to develop a new business. So one of the, uh, I worked a few years ago and it was a joint venture between two organizations to create one business. Right. And so what we did was, um, you know, there was a partnership agreement, you know, and both, they were two different, one was from the Canadian side, one was from the American side, but it had a it had a specific you know a specific goal to be able to deliver uh, employment training to our job seekers. So joint ventures. Do you have? Um, is there somebody that you can partner up with to make a new product? Maybe if we're thinking about uh, let me see a food truck. Maybe I have the business experience and I have there's a a cook that I know that wants a food truck. So maybe we can do that. I, I work on the business end, they work on the culinary end, right? And again, buyer supplier relationships. So I have, you know, who is it that you are getting your products from? Um, I have you, do you go through the same people? Uh, do they send you products on, in a timely manner? So buyer supplier relationships, there are two guys that I typically will go through. Uh, one that I know has, you know, this good stuff. Then the other one I know has, you know, maybe, you know, options as to um, different colors of leather. Last week I did, um, I did a workshop on uh, truth and national truth and reconciliation day and half my moxins were orange. So I had ordered orange leather from one of my vendors, one of my suppliers to be able to incorporate, you know, orange moccasins into, into that day. So who are our key, our key partners? Um, 
like I mentioned, you know, I've got one in Montreal and I got one in Northern Ontario and I know what each of them can provide to me. Um, who are our key, oh, sorry, who are our key partners? Who am I working with? Who are our key supplier are we getting our products from? What key resources are we acquiring from our partners? And what key activities do the partners perform? So if I need to order leather, then I'm contacting my supplier to be able to provide the leather, right? So our key partners are really um, important with being able to operate our business. One of the things, uh, one of, I guess this is a bad little story, but I did find um, an alternate uh, leather supplier. And so I messaged him because I was doing a workshop. I needed some white leather. I knew he had white leather. And so I sent him a message. I said, do you have any white leather? And he says, yes. He says, so he gave me a price and he says, you know, send me, you know, just send me an e-transfer and, um, or, you know, pay the invoice and I can get that to you tonight. I can get it out tonight. Well, it was 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night. And so I'm like, okay, he called me at midnight asking me if I paid the invoice. I'm, and right there, I should have, you know, should have, you know, put great big question mark, uh, you know, in that great big uh, red flag. So eight o'clock the, the next day, I sent him the e-transfer, you know, I paid the bill, uh, messaged him. Did you send out the product? Did you send it out? I was doing the workshop on like Wednesday. It was like a Friday. I was doing a workshop on Wednesday. No response. No response. Called him. No answer. Saturday. Same thing. I probably um, messaged him, I don't know, 20 times. Sent him a Facebook page. I called his cell. I sent him an email and no response. And it probably, it took me one, two, about three and a half months to get my money back. And it was only like a hundred, it was only like 200 Canadian, but I needed that leather on Wednesday. Right. So it was, um, I forget what I did about the workshop, but I mean, I had the workshop, <laughs> but you know, when we look at some of those partners, you know, we really all have to also look at, are they what we need when we need it? Are they trustworthy? Are they you know, expeditious with, um, with sending my product to me so that I can do what I need to do. If I'm having a flash, if I'm going to a powwow and sending, you know, having some stuff, whatever, are they, go, are they reliable so that I can, you know, do what I need to do as a, as a business owner? So, you know, key partners who, who is going to really help us with what we need. So suppliers is one of the biggest ones. Where are we purchasing? You know, where are you purchasing your goods? And who are our partners? Our partners could be economic developers, you know, within within the company. Our partners could be chamber of commerce, can be indigenous chamber of commerce. We have a, we have a indigenous chamber of commerce in uh, Western Canada, right? Um, you know, can do is can do our partner, right? So who, who are our key partners? So cost structure. Oh, we might be done a little early here, but we can always work on, uh, work on a business model. So our expenses describes all the costs incurred to operate a business model. So they can be fixed costs. So fixed costs could be Maybe if we, you know, purchased a food truck and I have that on, I have that as a loan, part of it might have been met, most of it might have been loan. So fixed costs is, could be that loan payment of that food truck. Uh, fixed costs, maybe my phone bill or sometimes my electricity, if I'm on a, like a balanced payment method, it might be the same every month. So fixed costs are what are the same prices every month could be my insurance, right, that I that I have to pay every month, variable costs, you know, what are costs that change, you know, sometimes I buy maybe one piece of leather, and then sometimes I buy three pieces of leather. Sometimes I need sinew and sometimes I need needles. And so that's always going to depend on how much I need at that at that time. 
So it's always going to be going to be constantly changing. Value driven costs. Mm, let me see. Maybe that is um uh could be let me see, mark maybe some marketing costs, right? You know, there's something coming up and I want to uh, promote it during that season. So it's going to add, add value to what I'm doing. Um, and cost driven. Um, look at um, look at gas or look at materials, right? Some materials might uh, go up. When I started buying when I was buying some of the leather, he was telling me that how much the prices were were going up. Uh, wood, you know, if you're if you're constructing, you know, maybe some tables or or you know some some sort of uh, maybe you're a con you're a, a construction person, right? So you know, as things pr as prices go up, then you're going to have to start increasing your your um your revenue and your prices. So we have to make sure that even food. You know, I know the prices of some of the salads that one of my business owner friends make, you know, this, you know, food prices has gone up, which affected her sales prices on, on what she was selling. So we have to make sure that if our expenses are going up, that we also, it's directly affecting, you know, our product and our, and our, and our um, profit then we might have to really adjust our pricing with that. Um, so what is it? What are the most important costs inherent to our business model? So if you're hiring people, right, it could be, you know, um, we also have to look at that. How much people are you hiring? You know, are you spending too much having people do something? And again, you're not making that much profit, right? So we have to look at that. Um, so which ones are most important? Well, I do need leather to be able to, you know, to do my, uh, to do my business, uh, which key resources are most, most expensive, right? Am I, am I hiring people that I maybe don't need? Am I hiring consultants maybe that I don't need, or, you know, my paying, you know, uh, this, this certain thing, maybe I don't need that, uh, which key activities are most important right? Maybe um, I hired a $5,000 web designer when, you know, maybe I could have did it um, if I did some, you know, tutorials, right? Maybe I could, if I, especially if it's for a static page, right? Maybe I just need my presence to be there for people to know who I am, or what I do, and where I'm located, and maybe some of my services, right? So, you know, um, so what key activities are most expensive? Maybe I'm buying a food truck, and that's costing me, you know, $75,000. So that's going to cost you be a little bit for the next few years. So really identifying which expenses are regular, right? Maybe routine expenses, and then which ones are, you know, most expensive, most expensive and uh, activities. Do, do I have the money to, to, to spend on that? Sometimes with different grants, um, with different grant programs, they they can they allocate for some of those expenses. So you know there are opportunities to maybe look at different grant programs. I know, and I'm sure it's across the the province or across the country. And I don't know if um a lot of you know about this about this, but there's are called ISET holders, right? Indigenous skills, employment and training organizations that have certain funding opportunities for business owners. So I hired my son uh, last summer. He worked with me for three months. He's in a business administration program. I was able to hire him because my business is at home and I didn't want anybody else coming into my home to work, right? So he helped me with my business, with marketing and promoting my business, right? He did some tasks and stuff. And I only paid, I had to pay just more or less the administrative fee. So he was covered, this project covered his salary. And I just had to pay, I think it was a hundred bucks a week that I had to pay to get his, um, his check processed and, you know, some little administrative administration fee. So there's a lot of different programs that are also, if you're looking at a marketing assistant, so that is some, 
that's a, that is some, some some help that can definitely benefit you know an employer when they're first starting out. Remember we talked about the um, the human resource portion. So if you're looking at, I can I could probably hire a curriculum developer right, to really develop those, or I can hire a web developer. And certain communities have certain funding where, you know, they might have a, a grant program. I know where I come from, we have a, a small grant program that can help entrepreneurs with, uh, with marketing. So they would pay up to $500 to get a website developed not a lot of money but some it's something they have a thousand dollars to help or get a business plan developed they have um some training dollars to maybe help train as as an entrepreneur i don't i know a lot of communities might not have it but some might do might have that so going back to expenses you know looking at where i be if i have this expense of key activities is there a way that I can get a grant to be able to do that key activity, right? So expenses, and again, some of our, oh, I guess I, I thought I reviewed my presentation and unless I copied the wrong slide. So we're down here at cost structure, right? So we talked about salaries, we talked about rent, we talked about insurance, um, could be some inventory, which would be flexible, right? So my inventory costs. And a lot of these are are important. Um, when we're creating our financial statements, we need to know our revenue. We need to know our expenses so that we can know our real profit. So that we know, oh yeah, I got a hundred thousand dollars in revenue. Oh, I made a hundred thousand dollars. Well, did you make a hundred thousand dollars? You know, how much did you have to pay for this? How much did you have to pay for that? How much did you have to pay for that? So when you are applying for future grants or maybe you're going on Dragon's Den or maybe you're doing Powell Pitch, all of that information is, is you need to know it, right? You need to, you know, some of the questions, uh, how much uh, revenue do you see? Do you see yourself forecasted in the next five years? Oh, um. Well, I don't even know how much I made last year, right? So it's things you need to know and you need to know where you're going. You need to know what your income is and you need to know what your expenses are so that you have that better, that better picture of, oh, here, look at, oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, okay, I've got my wrong slides here. But here, cost structure, we've got rent, employees, heat, hydro, cell phone, overhead costs, maybe any subscriptions I have to get rid of some of my subscriptions because I've got Canva I've got Adobe I've got QuickBooks I've got what else do I have you know I've got Square I've also got um what is it called um not Spotify the other one um I'm, oh I'm so lost the purchasing girl online so doing online sales, right? It sounds like Spotify, but it's not Spotify. Um, huh? <laughs> Shopify. Shopify. <laughs> Spotify. Shopify. So I'm paying Shopify, like I think it's a fifth a month. And it's for online sales. And I like how it looks, but I only have five products on there. And I didn't market, market my purchasing page. So now it's like, I'm just paying, I'm just giving that money away because I'm not utilizing it. So, you know, again, our cost structure. So on my key activities, delete Shopify account and find a different way. So, yeah. So let us, do we have any questions so far? So I want to take the next few minutes to do a group activity and and I wanted to do and those are just some examples right you know if we look into our into our communities um especially being in the tourism field I you know this was uh I think a lot of these are in a sense tourism related right it's um it's just there are a lot of opportunities within the tourism industry. More international visitors are looking at 
that indigenous experience. So, you know, in my role, it's like, how can I create, how can I create, develop, grow, right? Um, thanks, Kate. Uh, how can I create, de develop and grow indigenous tourism operators? So I am actually picking up or my idea, not one of these ones here, but my idea is Indigenous Guided Hiking Tour. So this is our pretend business. Let me go back to, let me go back to one of the business models here. Okay. So this one here, I've got a Indigenous hike, hike Guided Hiking Tour. So I just recently registered my business and I'm going to provide hiking tours in my community for visitors okay so that's my business so let us think about who would our customers be and you can put this in the chat and again I will I will uh, I will talk as we go um, so who are our customers is it going to be maybe community members maybe they've never like when I went home during COVID there is a beautiful spot and I never went hiking up it. And so I had to get somebody to bring me up there, right? So maybe community members who really don't know the community because there are some of us that don't. Sometimes we don't um, explore our own territory, our own beautiful territory, right? So we might be the first one there. So it could be community members. It could be, you know, non-Indigenous visitors. We want to welcome them to our community. And I had this, this discussion with one of my um with one of my leaders. And so I was talking about we have a, a, a campground in the community. And so I was talking about indigenous tourism and you know how can we bring visitors in? And she says to me, she says, Well, what if we don't want nobody coming into the community? And I'm like, and I and I said, you know what? That is probably a common perception of a lot of people, right? Close the door. We don't want people in. We don't want them, you know, but we have such beautiful territories. We have such beautiful places that there are portions that we can share with them. We, you know, do we have a campground? Do we want people coming in there? Maybe do we have a beach? Do we have maybe a, a hiking, a, a, a walking path? In my community, there is a beautiful walking path. And I went there. There was a lot of people that were walking and I think all of them were non-Indigenous people, right? Just coming and, you know, you know, strolling through that rock walking trail. So it was really great to see that. So who is our customer? So it could be, and it could be tourists um, through Garden River, through Sault Ste. Marie. They have a lot of ships coming and they have a lot of ships that dock overnight. So as a, you know, guided hiking tour operator, maybe I can work with this ship to be able to, um, to have them come and do that, that hiking tour. So indigenous, oh, indigenous visitors from out of town. Yes, definitely. I, when I went to uh, Edmonton, I had, um, um, they didn't take me on a tour, but, you know, I wanted to visit other communities. So I went to Mus Musquachis, right? I went to employment and training organization over there and she kind of brought me around so it was really nice to to visit you know another community so a definitely great great idea Ken right indigenous visitors from out of town they might not know what you have to offer they might not know you know maybe you know going to a different um you know I don't know the BC culture and be you know you might not know our culture right so it really gives us that um that knowledge of you know, another, another family member, right, from across the country. So, so it could be non-Indigenous visitors, could be Indigenous visitors, could be community members. It could be people that are, you know, that have the money to spend, you know, thinking about if we're doing that guided hiking tour, you know, we're going to, we're going to charge them a little bit, right? Uh, value propositions. What is the value of that? Maybe they're, you know, maybe they're going to learn um, uh, about Indigenous people. Maybe they're going to maybe learn how to make a fire, right? Maybe that they're going to go up to a spot and maybe they're going to learn how to make a fire. Maybe they're going to learn a couple of, you know, teachings, you know, maybe, you know, how we used to live in the forest, right? So, you know, they're getting that great experience, that cultural experience within that activity. 
how are we going to get that value to our customer, right? And again, you know, most common, you know, website, social media, maybe tourism organizations. If I'm doing a hiking a guided hiking tour, maybe I want to work with Ottawa Tourism, make it special for children that will grab the, that will, you will grab with parents. Okay, great. Right. Even, um, you know, we've, uh, my mom's a residential school survivor. So growing up, we didn't get much cultural activity or language. So in, in a sense, we also have to learn a little bit more. So it's a great way to teach, you know, some of us who might have not had the opportunity to learn, right? Um, so channels, how are we getting that to that, um, to that, um, to that customer? Relationships, you know, is it automated in person? Key activities, okay, find a trail. <laughs> Maybe I need to create my, 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 I don't want to say speech, but create my conversation. Um, maybe I need to re register my website. So all my initial to do's, my key resources, what do I need? Maybe if it's just me, maybe I need a backpack, um, to have some stuff, maybe going to, um, um, yeah, key resources. I might not need, um, maybe I need a helper, right? I know a company that, you know, they started off with a couple and now they think they're up to five employees, if not more. So do I need to hire people? Who are my key partners? Well, developing relationships with the tourism professionals, the local economic developers, maybe even local communities around the area. You really want to get out there and promote that uh, business to them. Revenue streams, guided hiking tours. What am I going to charge? Am I going to do an hour? Am I going to do three hours? Am I adding food into that, right? So is it going to be one to two people this much? So really developing that pricing model for that for that experience, right? So then that might take a lot of uh, research to be able to fine tune that pricing. And again, maybe surveying people, what are they willing to pay, right? Maybe surveying, surveying some tourism people I found out today my daughter is um she is in hairdressing and makeup so one of my co-workers had said you know what she goes my friend got married and you know they for hair and makeup they were quoted three thousand dollars so it can run anywhere between such and such I'm like whoa that's a great business for you know um to be able to do that for the wedding season right and then cost structure you know what am I what do I need? Well, maybe I need, I need um, insurance because I'm taking people, you know, on, on a, you know, through the bush, maybe it's going to be, um, you know, some carry, maybe again, some carry bags, or maybe I'm going to buy some groceries and cut treats and all that kind of stuff for, for individuals. So, you know, identifying what that cost structure may be. So, you know, this is a really, really, I just totally, I totally love the business model canvas to really help you I understand and identify your business. Um, I have here my contact information. Again, I will uh, make it an interpretive tour for Indigenous names and short Indigenous tale, tales about plants and animals and tour highlights. Exactly. Maybe it's a guided medicine walk tour, right? I know we have that on one of our islands. So you can really you know, customize that sort of uh, sort of tour and, you know, medicine plant walk, you know, maybe there's a specific trail that you are going to teach people about identifying. Maybe you're going to go into our schools within the community and bring the kids there. So yeah, there's a lot of, lot of opportunities. Maybe I want to become a guided hiking tour person now. <laughs> so here's my contact information. And again, if you need to get in touch with me, Michelle can always definitely help you out. So I want to thank you for participating and joining us today. Michelle. Ah, Kinen has gotten and thank you, Colleen. I just you walked us through it, and that was really helpful. Some really practical, tangible pieces that you brought that helped us to really like. Okay, what are some areas that are missing? What are some holes? Like I thought about, I've been an entrepreneur myself for about fourteen years, 
and, you know, thinking that I have to hold it all. I have to do it all. I have to juggle it all. And just this year, and let me say it was life changing. I hired uh, somebody to clean my studio, like, you know, th little pieces and it's changed. And even finding Canva has changed my, the way I do business. So all of those little tools and resources that we can tap into, I, I think is awesome. So you brought some really good knowledge today. Really appreciate you. Uh, we wish you on your new endeavor. You're, you're now in Ottawa with the, doing the Indigenous tourism, which I think is so amazing and so necessary, you know, highlighting the Indigenous gifts. So we, we wish you so much success and, and also with your business. I like the mockpreneur. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep saying it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So thank you so much for bringing your good knowledge to us. Niasen, Niasen. And thank you everybody for joining us. And we hope you have a good rest of the day. Take care of yourself. Walk gently and kindly in creator's worlds. Be well. Thank you. Miigwech.